Hi, everybody. I am Kara Sundlin, and I'm here for Kara's Cures, a new podcast we're excited to bring to you. This is where we're going to be talking about leading edge thoughts on health and wellness, bringing in the top experts in various fields to have you have a happier, healthier life. And I'm so happy to welcome Amy Newmark here. And people are going to know your name because you are the publisher of the very popular Chicken Soup for the Soul series. Now, our Connecticut listeners may not know that you're actually based right here. We are. We're in local. Connecticut, which is amazing. I mean, this book is read all over the world, right? You get letters oh, yeah. from every country. Every country. We're And we're translated into something like 50 different languages. Not every book, but, you know, different books. Like, we did a book about the empowered woman last year, and we had a Russian publisher that translated it into Russian. You never, you never you know never know. they're going to pop up. This one I really love. It's called The Forgiveness Fix. It's new. It's out now. And this was sort of personal for you, Amy, because I know we've known each other a while, but one of the reasons we haven't seen you on TV as much is you were having your own battle with cancer. I was. It happened last year. I was very lucky, actually, because I have a form of ovarian cancer called fallopian tube cancer. And most women have no symptoms, and so it's caught very late. I had a little bit of bleeding because fallopian tube cancer is a little different. And so I rushed right to my doctor, warning for everybody, if you're not supposed to be bleeding and you bleed, you go to your doctor right away. Right, you were saying, especially for women who are- If you're postmenopausal. Postmenopausal, yeah. that's a sign of sometimes. That's a, that's a sign that something is wrong. So I went, ended up having surgery, um, and then went through five months of chemo, which is horrible. Mm. Um, but I feel very fortunate because I was able to use this new technology called a cold cap where it's not comfortable. You wear this freezing cold cap on your head and it freezes your scalp so that your hair doesn't fall out because of chemo. And you were able to live without using a wig at all. You kept the majority of your hair. So I it really did. worked. I mean, I still have like new stuff that's coming up and like weird stuff around the edges <laughs> that I'm hiding behind my that ears. That happens when women have babies too, so that's okay. okay. <laughs> but the fact is that it was so nice in April when they said, you are in remission, and I'm like, and I have hair. Yeah. Yeah. But as you came through this, um, that was the inspiration for this next book, The Forgiveness Fix. And you might be saying, what does forgiveness have to do with our health? But um, there is a lot of scientific evidence that we need to forgive to be healthy. And for you, how did you see your battle with cancer as a reason you needed to write a book about forgiveness? Because a lack of forgiveness it just weighs you down you're holding something toxic inside you it's like a poison that you have taken you know it's not hurting the other person who you're angry at it's only hurting you mm -hmm. so just as with cancer you remove the tumor you remove the toxicity so too you can do that emotionally by using the power of forgiveness to shed all of that emotional weight that we all carry with us when we get caught and we start obsessing over all these past resentments and disappointments. Right, and we all do it, we all do we it. Do. But forgiveness really is the gift that we give to ourselves. And I like the visual that you thought of, that imagine we're wearing a cloak and as you go through life, the stuff that you're not forgiving, it gets heavy, right? Yeah, you, so you have every, th all your collection of bad things are all on this cloak and you're walking along and it's so heavy and it's dragging behind you as you're trying to walk into your future. Well, if you could just make a conscious decision. I'm not going to let that stuff bother me anymore. That's basically what forgiving is. You shrug off that cloak. Now you're not carrying that weight into your present and your future, and you can move forward unencumbered and have much better relationships with people and be much happier. We were talking about you in the studio before you came, and of course our crew was like, oh, that sounds nice. Um, that sounds like a great idea. I've heard of that. Forgiveness is good. We should do it, but it's so hard. How would you do it? How do you do it? And I think that's where people get stuck because yes. we think forgiveness means that you tell the other person who maybe really hurt you, that's okay. That's not what we're that's talking about. That's not what it is. I wish that forgiveness would be called something else, like, I don't know, Letting it go of ness, you know, yeah, something like, like right. letting it go of ness instead of forgiveness. So I'm not saying the person didn't do something terrible, and that is in your past. And I don't even believe in forgive and forget because you shouldn't forget it, but you just don't want to keep carrying it with you. So, for example, we had a woman who was a great example of how you shouldn't be carrying around all of your resentments and disappointments. So she kept talking about her ex husband to everybody. And she wouldn't let it go, and it was ruining her life. And then her best friend said to her, 
you might as well be married to the man still. You take him with you wherever you go. And then she realized, oh my gosh, he's not even relevant to me anymore. You know, if, if that's one of the things that sounds a little snarky, but I like to say, that person is no longer relevant to me. And right, that, that helps. really helps to remove the hurt from your current psyche. Right, and, and that's part of it. And when we talk, if you, it, just having the intention to forgive, and maybe it's something like really horrible that's happened to you, or maybe it's just something that your boss ticked you off in the morning. Either way, um, I know from doing research, when I wrote my book, Finding Dad, From Love Child to Daughter, we talked about, I mean, really I learned that, um, I think uh, that's another topic, but the reason I was able to have a good relationship with my dad that I hadn't grown up with is, intuitively, I guess, as a teenager, I chose forgiveness because I gave him a blank slate and we were yes. able to have that great relationship. Now, in my case, we reconciled, but it doesn't always mean reconciliation. But I know from some studies they've done at Yale, they said even just ruminating on negative thoughts for five, six, seven minutes can depress our immune systems for about eight hours. So it really is the poison we're drinking, thinking it's hurting someone else. Yeah. And so everybody has different methods that work for them. One person, her method for getting to that clean slate place that you got to with your father, she wrote down every single thing that her mother-in-law had done to her that was nasty. And there were some bad things. Like, can you imagine your mother-in-law not letting you appear in the family photos at a wedding? That's terrible. But right? this happened to one this of the people This happened to her and, and hundreds of other things like that. She spent several days typing them all into her computer. And then she read each one and deleted it. And then she said, I'm done with that now. And she felt lighter. So sometimes yeah. just the act of writing something. I've heard also you can write a letter um, and just never send it. And maybe yes. and, 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 uh, native traditions, they burn it. The idea that you're just, I'm done. People do that. People still burn them. Got to be careful. But yes, they still do them. So the, the, your first tip was don't carry your resentments and disappointments around with you because we know that gets heavy. You can always decide to wipe the slate clean. But that's kind of the first step on the road to forgiveness is we just have to make that decision. You know what? I want to do this. I want to do it for me. Yeah. You have to recognize that you're only hurting yourself. And then there's something that I like to call pre-forgiveness. So yeah. this is another tip. And it really... This is something I'm really good at, I have to say, and that is not even getting angry in the first place. Because if you understand the motivation of the person who did something bad to you, you sometimes realize, oh, it wasn't even really directed at me. The person was just having a bad day, or I didn't really know all of the facts. Like we had a woman who wrote a story for us about how she was so angry with her husband because he came home hours late on New Year's Eve when they were hosting a party. So she had to host the party by herself. And she was so mad. And he kept texting and saying, I'm stuck at work, stuck at work. And then she found out that he was legitimately stuck at work. Somebody had really messed something up. And because of the year end, December 31st, the entire company had to stay and do this huge project. Everybody was furious with him because he made them all stay. And she realized, wow, if I had just gotten all the facts before I got angry. So I call this pre-forgiveness. Yeah. Don't even go down the route where you're going to need the forgiveness. Just think up front. There's probably a reason why this is happening. I'm not going to get angry until I know everything. Well, there's a quote out there that says, you know, be kind. Everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. Often we, we make it all about ourselves. That this person just offended us. But um, if we take that extra moment and think, like, what's going on with them? Why are, what's the why? Why are they acting this way? You can do that. Uh, just get all the facts before you even get angry. And then you don't have to worry about forgiving anyone, right? Yeah, it's so much easier. And your life is so much smoother that way. This is what I do. If I go into a store and somebody, you know, the cashier is harried and a little bit nasty, I just think to myself, it's clearly not directed at me personally. She doesn't even know me. Mm -hmm. She's just having a bad day. And so I smile. And if I smile at her, it usually changes the dynamic. She can't do anything except smile back. But I'm basically pre-forgiving, not even getting angry. And so I think when you read 101 stories from people who were angry and then got over it, you see so many cases where they didn't even need to get angry in the first place if they had just explored the motivation of the person who wronged them. Yeah. And so I think this book is about forgiving other people it's also about forgiving yourself for your own inadequacies. And it's also about trying to do some pre-forgiving so you never even get that stress in your life for even a minute. You said forgiving ourselves, and I think this is so important. Um, 
we often will move to maybe be more generous with someone else than ourselves. As soon as we make a mistake, your inner critic is immediately on you, criticizing you, whatever. So it's really important. Sometimes the first step is just to criticize, is just to forgive ourselves and forgive that inner critic so that we don't have a whole bad day. We can make a lot of muck out of a small thing. Oh, we can. And and basically, the more you recognize your own issues and your own failures, you're so much more accepting of those and other people as mm. well. And it, yeah, it really is amazing how much it reduces your stress level when you use some of the practices that we lay out in this book. I mean, everybody says to me, you're so upbeat. I can't believe you're handling your cancer so well, blah, blah, blah. And I say, but I'm happy and I am upbeat, but I don't carry around resentments and that really helps. But, but And some people will say you're wired that way and, and, and that may be true for some people. I know we all have different set points. But you said really from going through this process, you learned that there are two ingredients to being happy and, and, and part of it is forgiveness. The other is gratitude. Oh my gosh, it's so important. So I actually went to see a psychiatrist once at Sloan Kettering, the cancer hospital, because I said to the doctor, I would like to learn how to manage my fear. So she sent me to the psychiatrist and I sat down with her and I told her about Chicken Soup for the Soul and how I've read tens of thousands of stories from all these people and how much I've learned. So then she started quizzing me. She went through her normal checklist. And one of the things she asked me was, are you grateful for anything? And I guess a lot of people say no, so all, I went into a five-minute list of everything I was grateful for. And she said, OK, you don't have to come back. <laughs> like, you're one and done. I don't need to see you. You don't need to see me. You are all set. You have all the life tools that you need to deal with this. And so it's forgiveness. And it's also that ability to count your blessings and always understand how good your life is, even if you're going through something difficult. And sometimes, you know, you might really, there might be real reasons to think that your life isn't good and all of that, uh, but there's always something small that we can latch onto. People could be going through some really tough times. Maybe they're having bad loss or financial difficulties or all the common things you stress. Um, but it can be a decision to cultivate gratitude. It's sort of like planting a seed. If you make it your routine that every morning you're going to wake up and you know, okay, I thank the bed, I thank this. I mean, it can be the smallest things. I thank this hot shower, I thank this hot cup of coffee. That's what I do. Just little things will kind of prime the pump and then you start feeling better. Yeah, I, ha I actually do thank the hot shower because I've traveled in so many third world countries. I am actually grateful for my beautiful bathroom every single morning when I take a shower. I do think about that. Yeah. I think, wow, I have this hot water. This is so great. Yeah. I don't have financial problems. I'm not hungry. You know, I have this one thing, I have this cancer to deal with, but everything else is so terrific and most people don't have all of these things. Yeah, and so that that's a practice and that's what we're gonna learn as we read the book. I think people, part of it is we can feel better when people don't feel all alone. And sometimes, you know, that uh, it's a human condition also to feel shame, right? And we don't share, okay, this awful thing has happened to me and you're angry about it and you're not sharing with it. When you read these stories, you sort of have this common humanity that, okay, other people have had financial problems or other people have had a spouse that wasn't true to them and there's stories of how other people just like you have found a way to have peace by some level of forgiveness I have definitely learned from working on these forgiveness stories the value of not carrying the weight around with me and I think that it is something that you can practice just like you can practice becoming a grateful person by keeping a gratitude journal or saying three things a day that were good about your day you can cultivate the forgiveness practice also. And here's a really cool way to do it. It's okay. another tip from the book. Practice it first on a really old hurt, one that isn't really as raw for you right now. Okay, so like so scale of one to 10, find something that's more like a three it happened a while. or four. Maybe it was awful, but it was a long time ago. And first practice getting rid of that. That thing that happened in fifth grade, that teacher who didn't give you the role in the play and you've never forgiven her. Yeah. You know, practice first getting rid of that and realizing, okay, I don't even remember the name of the teacher. She's probably not even alive anymore. It did not ruin my life. You know, and put that aside and work your way up to your current problems where your emotions are more raw. You know, one technique I learned, I just finished taking, for those who are in Connecticut, you can go to Copper Beach and they have amazing classes there. So I just finished taking the mindfulness self-compassion class. And it teaches a lot about um, 
daily practices just to manage stress and loving kindness is a huge part of the program. But one of the things, just like what you said, you pick something old, but they also would be you can sort of maybe find some things you might appreciate about that experience because maybe then you didn't get that part in the play. It made you stronger or to study more, and then seventh grade you ended up becoming a thespian or something like that. Right. I remember Katie Couric saying that her first boss told her she was terrible, she should get out of the business, there was no help, for, no hope for her. Uh-huh. I mean, clearly she went on to have a pretty good career in broadcasting, but Michael Jordan was cut from the basketball team. There's stuff that not only can you work on forgiving it, but you might be able to forgive it easier if you found out how it sort of helped you. That is true, and that goes back to the gratitude practicing also and understanding that there are silver linings to everything. Mm. You just have to open your eyes to see them. But I love the fact that you talked about mindfulness because that's another thing I've really been practicing because when you're going through what I'm going through, focusing on every little moment is so helpful Mm. and really appreciating every little moment. I was like a crazy person. A couple of weeks ago, we drove up to New Hampshire And it was the perfect fall foliage. We drove up 91, and it was beautiful. And I must have sounded like a crazy person to my husband because I kept saying, look at that. It's so beautiful. Oh, my gosh, do you see the orange and the yellow there? And I guess I've gone a little crazy with it. But that is part of really getting the value out of every single day, appreciating every moment and every detail of every day. And that way, every day can really, really count and feel very full to you. And if, you know, you might be like, oh, I should have done more, I should have done We all have that feeling of not, you know, not enoughness. It's very rampant in our culture. So if you're just focusing on how beautiful the leaves are, or they say you can't be overwhelmed, right? If you're just driving to work and focusing in the moment on the music or the leaves, we don't get so overwhelmed. We don't get so stressed. Maybe we don't need to forgive as many people people in the next eight That's hours. Right. <laughs> it's just it's just a virtuous circle instead of a vicious cycle. It's a virtuous circle. Oh, I like that. You virtuous your, circle instead of a vicious yeah, cycle. You okay. use your gratitude. So you count your blessings. You look through to the motivation of anybody who's wronging you, you know, and you don't even get angry about it to start with. You value every little detail of every day. Use your mindfulness. Use your gratitude. Use everything. And you just kind of float through life that way. Yeah, and I think um, you're going to love looking at this book because all of us I know think, oh, I'm busy. But the nice thing about this, these are little stories. They're quick. So fun little titles, Mud Pie and Coffee, There is No Love Without Forgiveness, There is No Forgiveness Without Love, little quotes. But these are digestible things. You could read a story at night. Maybe uh, you have to do some nighttime reading with your kids. Maybe you read one of these stories to them to kind of implant that idea. There are children's stories in there. People are actually talking about things that happened when they were in middle school and high school. And the other thing is that we have some specific chapters, like we have one about keeping marriages healthy. Oh, okay. And so there's some great stories that will give you tips about how to work better with your partner. We also have a chapter called When Parents Disappoint. Okay. Because that people are so hurt when their mother or father isn't perfect. You know, because you grow up thinking they're going to be perfect. And we beat ourselves up going, oh, I didn't do enough. I didn't make this. We have those too. We have the mothers self-forgiving and thinking, oh, I just gave my kids the worst vacation ever or the worst day ever. And then the kids... You know, the father comes home and the kid says, we just had the best day. We got to stay home all day and we did this and that. And the mother had been thinking, I'm the terrible person. It's vacation and I never even left the house, you know? Yeah. So so we have a lot of self-forgiveness for parents, for spouses. I mean, with 101 stories in the book, there is really something that will resonate with everyone. And, and there are so many different ways that our writers found forgiveness that there's going to be a method that works for you. Right. And I think that's really your message is that if you're even listening to this point, so thank you that you stayed with us. <laughs> if you're thinking, then you're, then obviously forgiveness is something you want to do. And that's really the most powerful thing. If you just make the intention that I am choosing to forgive, there are methods in here that you can keep doing. It doesn't happen in 30 seconds. But that's probably the most important decision is recognizing that it's a gift you're going to give yourself. Oh, yeah. And sometimes it does happen in 30 seconds, which is really a miracle. Nice. Okay. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I guess it depends on on how big the forgiving needs to be. But it's something that um, really can transform relationships. And I I love that, that uh, you'll see in here that nothing, even sometimes the outer 
exterior didn't change too much. I, I saw a story with a real difficult thing with two parents and their daughter who was going through tons of tough times. And the daughter had um, all kinds of disappointed in many ways. But they figured out how to relate to her differently by just saying that they were going to relate to themselves differently. And the relationship sh shifted. She didn't become perfect, but the way that they were choosing to forgive and relate to her just changed the stress level of everything. I think it changed the entire family dynamic and the whole family felt better after that. Yeah. It's amazing how much a lack of forgiveness tortures people and basically they're just walking through a, a black cloud. One guy in here, he forgave his father for something and realized that he said something about, I was living in the darkness because I was the one who had turned out the light. Mm. And that's empowering too, to know that you have a choice. It's really what you're choosing to do with it. So um, I love it. You can pick up the book, I guess, anywhere, right? Amazon, the bookstore. Barnes & Noble. The, yeah, any bookstore. Any bookstore. And nice to know that you're uh, just down the road for the people who are here in Connecticut. Um, Amy Newmark, is, yeah, the whole operation for Chicken Soup for the Souls right here in Connecticut. It is. Our entertainment business has started spreading out. So we have some people in New York City now. We have some people in Hollywood. But our entire book business is in Connecticut. You know, before I let you go, let me. That's another way that people can enjoy it. It's not just books. You have expanded to entertainment. So, are there videos? Are there shows? What else can people? How else can people listen or enjoy Chicken Soup for the Soul? We have. Um, you could go to Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment and look at it. But one of the best things that we have is we are in a joint venture now with Sony, mm. Sony Crackle, and we provide television shows and films for free to consumers on our Crackle app. Okay. And are they all uplifting? Well, a lot of us need the inspiration, so it's all going to be of... Uh, it's a mix. It's, a, it's mix. a mix. It's definitely a mix. You've got everything in there. Okay. So we can look for that as well. And what's the best way to find all of the entertainment? Um, go to the chickensoup.com website. Chickensoup.com, okay. Yeah. And that's also, I know you have a podcast as well, so people can listen to some I have the Chicken Soup for the Salt podcast, which is available wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, and we have one new show that I should mention. Yeah. Because it's free. It's okay. on our Crackle app. It's something we've done with Ashton Kutcher, and it's about, we, we show 10 kids, or millennials, in L.A. who are overwhelmed with their student debt, and we show them learning how to manage their finances and changing their life in that way. It's really entertaining, really interesting, um, and it's available for free on Crackle. It's called Going From Broke. I we take it. them from broke to becoming responsible money managers for their own lives. A little bit of everything. And then you have to learn how to self-forgive that you spent too Absolutely. much money. Absolutely. Okay. too. All right, Amy Newmark, thank you so much for joining us. And the book, again, is The Forgiveness Fix. It's part of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. Thank you so much for being Thanks here. For Thanks for having me. Yeah.